as soon as we can get that link up for you. Welcome back. Well, before the break, we took you to Syria and the incredibly harrowing story of the aftermath of a school bombing there. Well, I'm joined now in London by Salia Hassan, one of the doctors featured in that report. Salia, I've got to say that was one of the most powerful stories I've ever seen. You described it as Armageddon and your colleague Rolla broke down in front of the cameras. Tell us what you felt at the end of that horrific day. I think I was a uh, bit shell-shocked. It was probably one of the worst medical situations that I've ever been involved in. I'm an emergency medicine doctor in London. Um, I think just the, uh, as the day wore on and the true facts about the situation became clear and the fact that it was a thermal incendiary device dropped on a school, injuring up to 40 people, 29 of those teenagers, students at the Institute, just blew me away, really cruel. The memories must still be so vivid for you. How have you dealt with the trauma? Um, I think being able to speak about it, being able to engage with uh, medical colleagues, um, trying to be proactive about uh, trying to find solutions and about highlighting the fact that healthcare and humanitarian aid in Syria is being deeply hampered uh, the, the the impact of it you can see through the film on on the really sort of limited things that we were able to do for those very very seriously injured patients those kids um, sadly I've just found out that one of those patients uh, Siham girl that features in the film at the end who's saying you know this has got to stop how much more can we take well I've just found out that tragically two days ago she died I'm incredibly sorry to hear that. Just must be so difficult for you also to, to try to process that when it was somebody who you took care of. Now, I understand also that you're in touch with some of those who were injured as well. What did they tell you? Um, I, I'm in touch with the headmaster of the school and some of the teachers um, and they keep me updated. In fact, it was one of the uh, former teachers of Siham who broke the news to me this morning. Um, uh, they say, you know, some of them are pulling through very, very slowly. They're being cared for in Turkey because Syria doesn't have in the, at the moment um, in, in the areas that these people live uh, adequate health care to deal with these kinds of injuries, these multi-trauma, highly, uh, you know, categorised injuries that these people are suffering. So I, I hear that some of them are pulling through, some of them are going home. I'm worried about follow-up. If we were dealing with such patients, we would have uh, proper follow-up plans. That kind of infrastructure doesn't exist in Syria anymore, not in the areas, not in the north, outside of the regime control. These things don't exist anymore. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate I've come out of the situation, I'm, I'm reflecting and dealing with it, but I'm very concerned about the doctors, the Syrian doctors who we've left behind, who are having to deal with this day in, day out without any respite. Um, I really do worry about how they're going to cope with this, should, you know, hopefully one day when it ends. Salia, what do you want people watching this programme to take away from the story that you told? I think that this, the cruelty of what's going on and the fact that there is at this moment in time a lack of intent, a practical international support for people who are working really, really hard on the ground to, to provide some form of health care, humanitarian care. Um, it doesn't need to be left just to Syrians who have bravely stayed behind. More needs to be done. And also the impact of, of targeting uh, schools and hospitals. I mean, these are things that are categorically uh, breaches of international humanitarian law. And I think we need to be more serious about our shock and horror on, of, of this. It needs to be more practical. Something needs to be done. The United Nations has found that the Assad regime is targeting hospitals. As a doctor and one who may well go back to Syria, how does that make you feel? Oh, obviously, I'm afraid. Um, one of the doctors said to me, you know, the thing that we are afraid of most is the sky. Because when you're targeted by a jet, 
that's dropping bombs, there's very little you can do. I mean, how you cannot defend yourself. You are hugely vulnerable. Um, there's no option to negotiate, nothing, not fight back. Um, I, I, I think I'm still coming to terms with the, with, you know, the evil of that. How can you have in your mission plan that day that you will be going out to hit hospitals? Uh, who, who does that? I mean, it's just insane. Dr. Salia Asan, thank you so much for sparing the time to speak to us today. Obviously, there are countless people who are just terribly grateful to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.